let's start off right and break down 10 of the most useful After Effects edits that you should know for this year. I've been using After Effects for over 15 years and I believe these 10 motion graphics will provide you with the techniques you need to create a great motion experience. Let's jump in and get started. All right, you can create some very unique motion graphics with motion paths, which allows your objects to follow any path that you create. So for example, you can use any of the shape tools or even the pen tool to draw out a shape of your choice. I would disable the fill and set the stroke size to around five. If you used a shape tool, you can right click here inside of the shape layer and click convert to Bezier path. Then just copy the path like that and now you can take an existing graphic or quickly create a new object. And when you're ready to go, go inside that layer's position and paste the path data that you previously copied. Now your object will animate around your custom path. For this instance, I'll duplicate the shape several times and offset it in my timeline to create this unique motion path. Speaking of motion paths, setting your text around a custom path is even easier to do. With a title handily ready, select it, and once again, utilize any shape tool or even the pen tool to create a mask on your title. Then find your way over to the path options and set the path to your mask. You may need to reverse the path, but you can easily animate your text by alt clicking the stopwatch for first margin and using the time asterisk 200 expression to keep your title rolling by. On the topic of text, let's jump into the next dimension and easily create powerful 3D text. Again, with a regular title ready to go, make it a 3D layer. And for this, you'll want to use the advanced 3D renderer. This will allow you to increase the extrusion depth inside of the geometry options to make your title 3D. I would also suggest setting your bevel style and increase the bevel depth by a touch. To give your text a pro finishing look, go to the material options and set the specular shininess to 100% and the metal to around 50%. You can also go to animate and add a front color to add in some more detail. Looking a lot better, but to make this even more professional times two, <laughs> create an environment light. So this will give you some shadows and you can create a solid layer, make it 3D, and then set its X rotation to 90 degrees and then lower the Y position to be under your text. And you can finish it off by increasing the scale. You can also finish off the animation by checking enable per character 3D with the animate tab, then add in any parameter that you want like position or rotation, mess up the text to release some stress, and then bring it back all together by animating the range selector start from zero to 100% and this will give you some amazing 3D text. Now, what about a 3D logo? The process is similar, but here's what you'll need to know. Firstly, to make a logo 3D, you need the vector format of that logo, which is typically an Illustrator document or a .eps. Then with the logo in your edit, right click it, go to create and select create shapes from vector layer. Boom, now you've got a shape layer. Following the same principles from the 3D text example, make the shape layer a 3D layer, use advanced 3D, and set your geometry options to make the logo actually 3D. Do what you wish with the material options as well, but to change the color of the front, side, or bevel, make sure all the contents are inside of a group. Then you can add any of these color parameters to start changing the logo color. As before, you can add a floor and an environment light, and of course you can animate the logo as needed. If you want to master 3D and After Effects, as these are all relatively new features, you can check out my full course on creating cinematic 3D motion graphics in After Effects in the description below. Also, to kick off your editing experience right, be sure to get my 200 free template pack for After Effects and Premiere Pro. With this, you can get access to over 40,000 assets to help you produce any project you're working on this year in no time. You can easily update templates to fit your needs and even animate entire projects within a few clicks. So if you need to save time, be sure to check out the description below. All right, settling down from creating crazy 3D, let's combine path animations with classic 3D to create orbiting animations where an object clearly goes behind a central design. So like in our first technique, have an object revolve around a path, then make your central object, the visible path and the revolving object 3D layers, then parent the revolving object to your path, then adjust the X rotation of the path to bend this behind your main central design. 
Now select your revolving object, go to Layer, Transform, Auto Orient, and select Orient Towards Camera, and finally unparent the revolving object to give you the perfect orbiting animation. For now, let's ease things up with a seamless transition, which is a must know in 2025. When you have some footage or full screen graphics ready to go, create an adjustment layer. Then apply the motion tile effect from Stylize. Straight away, you can add a keyframe for tile center, move forward in your timeline, and increase the X or Y value until the image passes by a couple of times. And this should give you a sliding transition. Now, I would consider applying the directional blur effect and animating the blur length to add in some natural motion blur. I would also consider editing the keyframes by making them easy ease with F9 on your keyboard, then edit those keyframes inside the graph editor to make a swish, seamless transition. One of the most powerful animations to create today is the morph. Preferably to pull off a professional morph, you need to have the vector version of a logo or a graphic, uh, or you can just use a regular shape layer but you can go ahead and right click the layer, go to create and select create shapes from vector layer. And now you will have the shape layers for each design. So select those shape layers and hit U twice on your keyboard. And for the layer that has the most paths, add keyframes for every path and color. Then in your other shape layer, select a single path and copy it and then paste it into the master shape layer. And then you continue to copy and paste every path into that master's corresponding path until your logo or graphic will create a morph animation. Then you can change the colors of each path as well to match the new morph design. And lastly, feel free to offset the keyframes and enable motion blur. And that's how to morph anything. It is a little tricky, but it does require a little trial and error. Another powerful animation is liquid. To do this, create a rectangle that is larger than your title or graphic. Then animate the position of your rectangle to move on top of your main graphic. Set the track mat of your shape to the title. And if you like, you can duplicate your title and turn it into a stroke right here in the character panel. Now add the turbulent displace effect to the shape layer. And I would increase the amount and all click the stopwatch for evolution and type time asterisk 250 to give us this liquid motion. You may also want to add the rough and edges effect from stylize. But when ready, feel free to duplicate the shape, change the color, and then finally offset it in your timeline. Keep in mind, you can use this liquid technique anywhere else in your project. Now let's jump back to 3D and talk about creating 3D motion graphic shapes. So you can create any shape that you want. I'm simply using the pen tool here to create a plus symbol. But when you're ready, make the layer 3D and extrude the depth. You may want to use a Cinema 4D renderer this time to easily create exact colors. Uh, you can also add a side color to your created group. For this animation, I'll adjust the rotation, animate the scale, and specifically animate the Z rotation. If we use the loop out offset expression, this will continue the animation forever. Now for added style, pre-compose this layer, call it whatever you like, right click, and then add a stroke. Change the stroke settings, and that's how you create a cool 3D shape. For the last technique, it's all about stylization to turn basic objects into cinematic masterpieces. For instance, I'll create a white rectangle that could be used as a window or a door. And for a light beam, duplicate the rectangle, position it just underneath the original one, then go to that rectangle's path, right click and click convert to Bezier path. Then edit the path to angle the new light reflection. And to fade this out, let's apply the linear wipe effect and adjust all three settings here to get this nice fade. Now, to make this cinematic, create an adjustment layer. Apply the noise effect, and we can set it to 12%, uncheck use color noise, of course. Now, apply the glow effect from Stylize. Increase the glow radius and add the wiggle 1, 50 expression to animate the scene. Lastly, try adding the posterize effect to give your work some style. Good luck this year, subscribe, and always be creating.